Welcome to my revision course on CPA paper 10, Management Decision and Control. My name is Senior Huntington, and it's my privilege to help you get through this November exam. I welcome you all to my revision session. And today's session, you're going to look at CVP analysis. Of course, it's a key syllabus area in this paper. So it's what we are going to look at today. Then in the subsequent sessions, we shall be looking at some other key syllabus areas. Of course, my key question about CVP analysis is from the October 2021 question paper. So that question paper should be on your table. That's the question I'm going to tackle. Then we see what we are supposed to do when it comes to that specific key question. When we talk about CVP analysis, of course, this is one of those common techniques which we use in management accounting. Sometimes, of course, it is referred to as the break-even analysis. Cost CVP analysis is a way to find out how changes in a variable and fixed costs affect the farmer's profits. Of course, companies use CVP analysis to see how many units they need to sell to break even or to reach a certain minimum profit. Of course, the analysis is based on different assumptions, including the sales price, fixed and variable cost per unit being constant and many others. We need to understand CVP analysis. Sometimes it is referred to as the break-even analysis, okay? So this technique, of course, is very useful for managers when it comes to making short-term business decisions. We have different approaches to deal with the CVP analysis, but of course, in this session, we are going to use the equations approach. We see how we can solve this. Of course, these are some of the extracts from the budget estimates of the company for the year ending 31st December 2022. We see we have food supply and transport supply. Now, this is a malt product CVP analysis case. We have two different products, or we can refer to them as services, food supply and transport supply. We have the number of customer orders, commission per order, variable costs per order, as well as the apportioned fixed costs per order. Of course, the company has a target profit after tax for their ending 31st December 2022 which is 110.81 million, and a corporation tax rate is 30%. We are required to advise the CEO on the number of orders of food from customers and transport services required to attain the targeted profit after tax for their ending 31st December 2022. Thereafter, we shall also try to discuss any six limitations of the CVP analysis. So this is our scenario in this case. Of course, uh, one of the assumptions of CVP analysis, uh, this analysis assumes a single product. But in this case, we see that the company is dealing in more than one product or service. Of course, uh, this is food supply and transport supply. So these are services which the company offers and we have two different services. So we can look at this as a multi-product scenario. When it comes to multi-product scenarios, of course the approach changes because in this scenario, where we have different products, different services, we use the weighted average contribution per unit 
before we use the weighted average CS ratio as we are going to see in this particular scenario. I'll take you to my working page. Then we see how we are going to come up with our computations and then how to advise this company on what to do. Of course, uh, we are required to advise on the number of orders of food from number of orders of food from customers and the transport services. Eh? Transport services. That are required to achieve a target profit after tax of 110.81 million. Remember, I've told you that this is a multi product scenario. So if you have to compute this, then of course the formula to use is fixed costs. plus the target profit, then over one minus our tax rate. Then we divide by the weighted Weighted average contribution per order since uh, we are required to advise on the number of orders. So I'll use the weighted average contribution per order. But remember, uh, note the weighted average contribution per order, this will equal to the total contribution over the total over the total number of orders. Weighted average contribution per order will equal the total contribution over the total number of orders. Let's see how we can come up with the weighted average contribution per order because we need this first. If you have to get the number of orders of food from customers and then the transport services, that will be required to achieve this target profit. So we have food supply, then the transport services, then total. I'll start with our number of orders. So we have number of customer orders. Number of customer orders. And the, the food supply orders according to the question we have 1,260,000 orders, then the transport services. Up, this is transport supply. This is transport supply. Transport supply, we have 540,000. Total, when you add these two, the orders for the transport supply and then the orders for the food supply, we have 1.8 orders in total. 
So these are the number of orders we have for these two services, food supply, and then the transport supply. We have the commission. Per order. The commission per order for the food supply, of course, the company earns a commission of 5,000. Then for the transport, it is 8,500. That is the commission per order. But of course, the company incurs some variable costs on each order. For the food supply, the company incurs 2,750. Then for the transport, the company incurs 4,590. Of course, now here you can get the contribution. The contribution per order. Contribution per order. 5,000 minus 2,750. Here we have 2,250. Then transport, this gives us 39,110. These are the contribution per orders, okay? Now we can get our total contribution. Total contribution. Now to get the total contribution, you get a contribution per order times the number of customer orders. So the total contribution for the food supply we are getting this times the contribution per order. Number of orders times the contribution per order to get the total contribution. So here we have 2835. So total contribution for the food supply, we have two, uh, 2835. Then for the transport supply, we have, this is 2114. We just try to confirm on my calculator here what we have. 319 times 540. Yeah, that is our contribution for the transport supply. Then our total contribution, of course now it will be the total contribution of the food supply and the transport supply. Of course, when you add the total, Two eight three five. This is four nine four six for four hundred thousand. Four hundred. Now so that is our total contribution. So meaning that now we can get our weighted average. Weighted average contribution per order. And this equals to 4946400,000, which is our total contribution over the total number of orders, and we have 1.8, 1, 1,800,000 orders. This gives us a contribution, which is the average contribution per order of shillings 2748. That is our weighted average contribution per order. That's the weighted average contribution. Uh, all done.
So with this, we need to substitute in our formula. Then we come up with the number of orders for both the food supply and transport supply we need to achieve our target profit. So let us get those number of orders. So the fixed costs, do we have the fixed costs? The fixed costs, we have to compute them as well. Let's come up with our fixed costs. Food supply. This is uh, determining fixed costs. Because they were not even in total in our question. Though we have the fixed costs per order. Fixed cost per order. The fixed cost per order. Let's check this again and we see. Food supply, we have 1,680. 1,680. Then transport, we have three. 760, is it? Yeah, 3760. So we just multiply by the number of orders. Number of orders. Here we have 1,260,000 orders. Here we have 500,000 orders. We multiply the fixed cost per order with the number of orders to come up with the total Fixed costs. 1680 times 1 to 660. This gives us 111. 6.8. Then 3760 times 514. This gives us 4. Of course, you can come up with your total as well. Total. Total is four one two. That is your total fixed costs for, for the period. So now we can compute our number of orders. Fixed cost we have for one for seven. We add our target profits. Add the target profit. So of course, we have to divide this by one minus the tax rate, which is 0 0.3. Then we divide by the weighted average contribution per order, which is 2748. That is our weighted average contribution per order. So when you work out this, you get. 1,566,776 orders. 
So these are the total number of orders we need from both food supply and transport supply if we have to achieve the target profit after tax of 110 million, 810,000. These are the number of orders we need in total. But being that it's a multi-product case, we can still go ahead to find out the orders for the food supply and then the orders for the transport supply. Find out the orders for each. We use the sales mix. We use the sales, we use the sales mix. IE, we have for the supply. According to the information given for the supply, we have one to sixty thousand orders over a total of one point one point eight. But you want to find out out of out of uh, the one five six six seven seven six orders for the supply has how many orders? So time was one five six six seven seven six. So food supply, the orders we need for the food supply, we have 1096, uh, orders. Then transport supply, this is now 514, one8 This gives us for seventy zero three orders. So in total, of course, when we add this, it takes us back to our one five six six seven seven six C orders. Those are the orders we need if we are to the companies achieve the target profit of 110.81 million. However, out of this, we have these for the food supply and then these for the transport supply. So that is our part A of the question. It's a multi product case, so you have to use the weighted average contribution per order since they are interested in the number of orders. If they are interested in the sales revenue, then your denominator will be the weighted average CS ratio. But here it's number of orders, so we have to use the weighted average contribution per, per order. Part B, of course, it's asking for the limitations of CVP analysis. And these limitations, we can get them from the assumptions. If you know the assumptions, then you can still come up with the limitations from the assumptions. For example, uh, the analysis assumes the production of a single product, or if you're producing more than one product, there should be a constant sales mix, but this is not realistic. Companies produce different products and sometimes the sales mixes keep on changing. The fixed costs per unit, sorry, the fixed costs cannot be constant at all levels of output. Fixed costs are only constant within a given range of activity. Beyond that activity range, of course, fixed costs will increase. Don't forget we have what we call the step T fixed costs. The selling price per unit and the variable cost per unit can never be constant. So limitations are from the assumptions. Okay. Limitations are from the assumptions. Still, the analysis assumes that costs can easily be separated into their fixed and variable elements. But separating mixed cost is also a bit challenging, so that can also be a limitation. The analysis assumes a relevant range, so meaning that uh, we cannot apply it to all levels of activity, all levels of activity. 
and many, many, many other limitations of CVP analysis. In the next session, we shall, we shall try to look at something else. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.